Stephanie Liu, and welcome to a new episode of Lights a Camera Live. I've got an amazing replay video for you. I had Winnie Sun, one of the most followed financial advisors, join Lights Camera Live to talk about freelancing and how you can make it work for you in 2019. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and play the replay for you. And if you guys have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments because I'll still be looking at the comments as well. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and get started. The awesome, the amazing, beautiful Winnie Sun. For those of you who don't know, she is a regular contributor to Forbes, Good Day LA, and Fox News. And Winnie has appeared on the biggest business programs and channels in the country, including CNCC, ABC, CBS, Fox Business, Hot Finance Startup Cheddar, and dozens of local network affiliates to help viewers better understand their money. So if money is something that you're focusing on in 2019, this is the episode for you to tune into. She's also one of the most followed business podcasts and one of the most followed financial adv advisors on the internet. Welcome, Winnie. Thank you. So excited to be here with you, Stephanie. I'm a huge fan of you. Oh my good. I, you know what? Just thank you. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to be cheesing this whole entire time. <laughs> All right, you guys, if you're just tuning in, we're talking about the freelance economy and the ins and outs, the things that you should know and the things that you should avoid. And who better to talk to you about your future and your money than Winnie Sun. But before we get started, here's a disclaimer. Winnie is not your financial advisor. So <laughs> any advice that she gives you, you act on your own accord. Do you usually have to give that type of disclaimer, Winnie, whenever you're on shows? You know, this is actually a first. Oh. So... Yeah, <laughs> but but yes, this is. I'm really glad that you said that. So I will give you as much advice as I can without getting myself in trouble. <laughs> well, good, good, good. Okay, so let's talk about freelancing in 2018. What were the trends in freelancing in 2018? Well, I think, you know, like more and more of us just realize that we want more income and we want to diversify ourselves. So certainly more so than ever, more people are going and looking at freelancing. And, you know, some people even make freelancing their main gig, you know. So I don't think this is actually a negative. I love it because it doesn't only just bring you more income, but it diversifies you as a powerhouse, meaning that you can do other things. You have other passion points and you're learning new things and it just makes you a more well-rounded either entrepreneur or employee. Like It's a beautiful thing. You know, I, I actually I agree with that because, you know, when I was working at the agency, I was the director of social strategy. And then, you know, once you have your job title, they kind of pigeonhole you into that one thing. Like, no, 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 you only do social, so you shouldn't tap into video or what anything that the brand team is doing. And I think when you're freelancing, that gives you the opportunity to really pursue your passions. Right. Absolutely right. agree. Very cool. And so with people joining the freelance economy, what are some what are some mistakes that they should go ahead and avoid? Because I know there are a lot of things that I kind of fell into and I was like, why did I even do that? Why didn't anyone tell me? <laughs> yeah, I think the biggest one, Stephanie, would be that you have to pay yourself. And I think a lot of times when you work for yourself or you have like that side gig, you kind of think about that as just like extra money. So what happens is you start to think about building an office or buying more technology or doing all these things and you forget at the end of the day this is still a job and it's still income and you want to be able you know fast forward six months or a year from now or five years from now and have something to show for it because most of the times you just spend money thinking well I still got my you know main gig that pays me so I think it's critical that you you treat this as another job you make sure you pay yourself and more importantly that you put aside some of that for your future that's key Okay, that is so true. And also put aside for the extra taxes. I feel like yeah. that was the big surprise for me. It was like, oh, you know, my main gig, that'll take out the extra fees um, right. that I'll have to pay at the end of the year. And then as my freelance business started to grow mm. and expand, mm -hmm. I didn't take that into consideration. And by the time April came around, I was like, oh, did not even think about that, did not even realize it. Yes. Yes, totally. I have a lot of big, you know, I have a lot of big social media influencers that are my personal clients. And a lot of times, you know, money comes in from YouTube or it comes from Facebook or from brand work. Right. And oftentimes the check just comes in that gross amount. But you don't realize that 
that tax will be due. And not only that, um, you now have opportunities to do some really serious planning, meaning that let's say this is your side gig, right? And you have extra income. This could mean that you could actually have two retirement plans and put aside these different strategies that can alleviate some of that tax pain and give you more money in your pocket. So definitely an awesome planning opportunity and something that we really embrace. Okay, you hit on something that I didn't even think about, and that was retirement. And yeah. you probably get that a lot from people that you talk to. They're like, hey, I've got the side gig. I'm freelancing. And they're not even thinking about retirement. So what, are, what are some options that freelancers can take into? Because when you're freelancing, you know, you don't get the 401k that you would normally get from your, your main business. So what can you do? Well, freelancing is pretty awesome because oftentimes you're going to be paid what we call 1099. So that means you're not getting a typical W-2 paycheck from a major employer. In, in a lot of times you're, you're treated as an independent contractor, which avail, avails you some really great planning opportunities because you can actually set up like a SEP or another type of retirement plan, just like if you were working for a big company, but it would be your own plan. And as your income grows higher, there's even more options. Like you can set up a SEP IRA or like a, you can definitely do a SEP IRA, which is a sort of a 401k type of plan for those of us who are self-employed. And you can still piggyback on that and put together another traditional IRA or a Roth IRA, depending on your income and depending on your needs, you can put away even more for retirement. And for those of you who are out there, and I know you're out there that have even higher income, you can do like what I do for many of my clients is we take a look at the option of a defined benefit plan or a pension. And that's what I call the mother load of savings. Because if you had, you're in that situation where you can put aside money now for that in the future, and let's say you're still in your 20s or your 30s or your 40s, this is like, this is like putting your retirement savings on steroids. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. It's awesome. This is one of those things, you guys, where I love having guests that are super smart in their industry. Because then in the background, I'm like, I'm just going to put the camera on her and take these notes. <laughs> So when you're talking about retirement and putting money away for it, what is what is the max that you could put in a SEP IRA? Well, it depends. So typically you're going to want to take a look at like 15% of your income, sort of sort of that plus or minus range. And then, of course, there's like certain caps. So it really depends on a couple of factors. Of course, your income, your age, on how much you should be contributing. And this is also a great opportunity to have a discussion with not only your financial advisor, someone like myself, who could be your financial advisor, but also like an accountant. So oftentimes, like right now, especially it's like the beginning of January, we're actually preparing all these tax kits for our clients um, to coordinate efforts with their CPA. So especially if you're an independent contractor or a freelancer, this is a huge opportunity. And ideally, we start these conversations like right now would be ideal because you can talk about um, like, all your earnings from last year, what your expenses were last year, and through that we'll have some numbers to calculate how much you can contribute. So like for example, in 2019, well, like last year for example, 2018, you could have contributed 18,500 into your 401k, and so this year, 19, it'll be an extra $500 if you're under the age of 50. Now if you're over 50, you get to put away more, and that's a whole other discussion, but this is like the cap, there's no real minimum. So a lot of times people will say, well, what's the minimum I have to contribute? Zero. But you can you can put away more if you want to, which helps actually push your taxable income down depending on which kind of format you pick. Do you pick like a traditional IRA, Roth IRA, you know, or the SEP, traditional SEP? And then that means that the government collects less money from you tax wise. You keep more of your money and you put it aside for your retirement, which means you might be able to retire earlier and better. <laughs> oh my God. I love this. I'm like complete. And this is the perfect time. Like, like Winnie just said, the perfect time to have this discussion because it's the start of the new year. Numbers are fresh in our mind. We're thinking about our 2019 goals. And I definitely think that saving it should definitely be at the top of our list if we want to be like profitable in our companies. What would you say um, would would be your advice for someone that's just starting their side hustle and they're like, I well, I need this, I need I need to subscribe to that. When should people start investing in their business versus saving? Like, what should they like? Yeah, go ahead and buy that. <laughs> 
Well, this is a, such a wonderful question. I think it depends on the situation. So, for example, let's say all you have is freelancing, right? And you don't have that main job. Then I think that you have to take a look at where your income is. Maybe you have like a couple clients and you're hoping to grow more. So you almost have to 50-50 that money up to some of it for, you know, obviously client acquisition, like finding new clients. How are you going to do that? You're going to do that through social in a very inexpensive way. Take a look at the tools that you're paying for because you can these can really add up too, right? We know a lot of these social media tools are like only like $29.99, $29.99 a month. But if you have too many of them, they can really creep up on you. So you really want to kind of keep your expenses as low as possible and try to, if you can, at the minimum, to try and put away at least 10 to 15% of what you're bringing in for yourself. Uh, because if you can't do that, a lot of people say, well, I'll do that later. I'm so busy with business, I'll do that later. But the thing is, if you can't do that early on, you have to constantly reevaluate your business plan to see if your business model is a good one for you long term. Is it profitable long term? And at what point were it such a pivot from being sort of a, a trial business? to a really important business that can pay you for your, your, your whole like lifestyle. That is so brilliant. Okay. And so when we were even talking about how you plan with your clients, um, you said you had like this whole formula that you sit down and you work with them and then they could talk to their CPAs about it and they could talk. Uh Oh, you said financial advisor, bookkeeper and CPA. So would you say that most freelancers need all three? Well, it depends on what phase you are in your freelancing career. If you're just starting off, I would say you need a good accountant. I always say this. I know you could use, um, there's some great tools online. If you're not quite like at that phase where you need to have a more complicated return and you're just a W-2 employee, then like TurboTax and that is probably going to be a great alternative to, for you to save some money. But if you're really gung-ho and you maybe you have a few clients, you start to make some good money in your freelancing or even in your own job and there's things that you can deduct or be more strategic on, I think a CPA is like invaluable. In fact, I could do my own taxes because of my financial background and I still don't. I mean, my CPA and I are probably on the phone or texting like every single week because there's so much strategy that happens with a good accountant. And everybody was like, so who's your accountant? If, if you want to know, call me, I will set you up. But um, super, super important, especially as you grow. And then the CPA and the financial advisor like myself really can help you plan. And it's great to have us be two different people. Okay, word of advice, you should always have your CPA and account or CPA or accountant, CPA slash accountant, and your financial advisor should always be two different people. They should not be the same person because you wanna have church and state separation of powers. So for example, let's say I, well, it wouldn't be me. Let's say there was a financial advisor who did a like not a great job for you. Then you need the CPA to come in and say, you know, you might want to look at getting another financial advisor and vice versa. But if I'm doing the same thing for you, then I probably would never tell you that. So I think that doesn't really help uh, a client. There should always be that. Um, so really, really important to have that sort of relationship in place because especially when you're freelancing and starting your own business, I'm telling you a good accountant, a good financial advisor that works with business people like myself, that specializes in working with business people, that will help you save so much heartache and money down the road. I mean, we there's so many things that we know that we can teach you and advise you on early on. That's, you know, it's it's so true in terms of hiring the right people because it will save you the heartache. Yeah, I know that when I first started having my side hustle, like I worked at a marketing agency and then I had a side hustle and I had the same tax guy that was helping with all my taxes. But when I eventually turned into an LLC, right, after five years of working with him, I was like, okay, let's turn into an LLC. And then when yeah. it came time to do um, the business taxes, he disappeared. And I was like, no way. He, what? And like, to your point, like he was my CPA, my bookkeeper, and he, and my tax guy. And I was like, no, that didn't work out. So um, word of advice to you guys, um, when you're when you're about to hire any of these roles, when you, what are some questions that you should be asking um, when you're looking to hire a financial advisor, um, a bookkeeper, or even a CPA? Yeah, yeah, good questions. So I'll touch upon the book paper CPA scenario for you real quick, okay? Because I think this is a great one. So before landing on, so when I was working at Smith Barney, 
and I was a financial advisor. I've been in financial advisor for a long time, but when I was working at that firm, I knew I needed to find a really great accounting firm that I could introduce to my clients, right? And have more than one. And so what I did is I did a search. I like literally the CPA that I work with right now was like number 43 or something. I interviewed so many different accounting firms. And what I say is this, you need to have an accountant who totally gets you. That literally when you make a phone call or you text or you reach out an email, they give you an answer that you need on the spot quickly. It's not going to be like, oh, I have to get back to you or, or, you know, it depends. And then they give you like pages or links to read into these things. No, this is a, give me an example. I'll say like to my CPA, I'm like, Steve, you know, I think I need a new car. And he'll say, well, what kind of car do you, where are you looking at? I said, well, I need this because we go to LA all the time for business and this and that, I need something. And he'll say like, okay, well, based on that, you should get this, this, and this. This is how much you should spend. This is, if you spend this much, this is a deduction and this and that. I mean, it's just like basically boom, boom, boom. And you get the answer instead of like drawing out and I only meet the count maybe once a year or stuff like that. That doesn't do it when you're working for yourself. I mean, you need basically almost like an extension of you who works at your speed. Now, financial advisor, I would say the same thing. You really have to gel and gel really well. So, for example, like my clients are like extensions of my family. We love, like, I don't mind talking to them all the time. I just had a call with one of my clients, you know, he's, um, he's driving, we're talking on the phone and he's telling me about these different television shows he's just completed and all the things he wants to do, his upcoming wedding and stuff like that. And to me, that's the stuff that I want to hear because the more I get to know you as a person, the more I love you as a person, the better I can actually give you financial advice. So it's not about just like client A has this much money, therefore we invest our money this way. It's more about really caring and hearing the things that they that you don't see on the statement that are so critical to giving you good financial advice. That's amazing advice because to be honest with you, like, and I'm, and I'm just being full blown transparent with you guys, you know, the viewers and the way that I was running my business was how I was doing my taxes when I was still at the agency. I would just meet with my tax preparer when it was time to do my taxes. We didn't do any planning in terms of what conferences am I going to? What are my travel plans? Am I driving mm -hmm. a lot to certain places? Right. Um, so this is just so eye-opening. And you guys, Winnie Sun is the most followed social media person when it comes to being a financial advisor. So if you have any questions, by all means, drop them in the comments and she'll give you some of her guidance. So definitely engage with her because she's brilliant. She's smart. Like I'm literally out here just like, I love that. I love that. I love that. <laughs> so Winnie... How do you know when it's time, or actually how about this, what would your suggestion be to someone whose freelance gig is starting to blow up and they're still stuck at their main job, when is the, when is the best time for them to switch from side hustle to full time into their freelancing? That's such a great question. I think it's time to think about seriously about segueing to full freelance when the freelance can income can start to replace your main hustle. Uh, so, you know, that being said, it's probably not the soonest, but if you can handle and juggle both, then more power to you. I actually prefer that because if you have more income, there's more that you can save and more things that you can do. And I think it also gives you diversity because sometimes when you're only freelancing, there's only so many opportunities and things that you see. But sometimes when you work at the, a larger company, you might have that recognition of brand recognition of working at that company. You might meet certain people that could help you along the way in the future. So it really depends, but if you feel like right now you've got to give up your day job because you have that huge contract that they is going to take up like 60 hours of your week, then that's your signal. So I think it's very much money driven. So less feelings in this situation, I say be very pragmatic. Take a look at your expenses, take a look at your income and make it a decision, not by feeling, make a decision based on financial reasons. And that will give you peace of mind in the future. Okay, that's brilliant. And so here's another question for you. Because <laughs> most people, like, as a marketer and starting my own side hustle, the only reporting that I had always kept in mind was the P&L report. Are there other type of reports that I should be looking at or that I should be sharing with my, my bookkeeper, my financial advisor, that maybe they're not asking that I should know like, yes. or be checking on? 
Yes, 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 absolutely. So one of my favorite tools to use is QuickBooks Online. I love it because it draws in all your credit cards, your bank statements, all your expenses in one. And it's great because it can pull out that data. And then your CPA can have access to this as well, this tool. Because the thing is, in addition to like your PL, there's so many other things that if by the time they see it, could be like six months from now. And that's not so good. Instead, you want to basically have constant communication with your accountant. For example, when you're a freelancer, in most cases, you're paying estimated taxes every quarter. But the thing is, if your accountant knows how much you're bringing in in terms of revenue from your freelancing gigs and how much you're spending, they can adjust and kind of coach you through the ways of like how much you can spend, how much, uh, you know, how to co-travel. Like, I think you have to really coach through this process initially, especially like you said, Stephanie, you're going to conferences, you're speaking, and how to handle those expenses. And not only that, is to how to record those expenses. Is it all by credit card? And if it's all by credit card, are you utilizing your credit cards to the best power that they can be and get points and for travel, which translates and then that that segues, I know you have kids, segues into family travel, was business travel, so many different components that if you talk to your accountant maybe regularly, they can give you advice on that. And like a financial advisor, I love talking to my clients constantly because my clients are like you, like super dynamic people. They got this and that happen all the time. And, you know, in addition to talking to them, I also connect with them on social channels because so much is going on with my clients that it just gives me another layer to kind of keep on their radar and learn about what's happening with them. Yeah. So think about that. I mean, your CPA and financial advisor should be your buddy. If they're not, you got to ask yourself why. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, that makes so much sense because money is a very important thing and it leads to more opportunities for you as well as your family, well, for me at least, um, I just never even thought about it. I'm, I'm like literally having like this mind-blowing moment where I'm, I'm coming to the realization that, no, I really only talked to my bookkeeper when the quarter ends to say, okay, here are all my financial statements. Can you can you now add them in there? And then my my accounting guy goes, here's your, you know, here's your birthday card, here's your Christmas card, but I really love the fact that on why it's important for you to build a relationship with your financial advisors and really talk about where it is that you want to go in your business or where do you want to go in terms of retirement. You guys, if you're loving this, please give us some likes, give us some hearts, tag someone that need to needs to be in this conversations too. Because I would It's so important because yeah, I mean I, I love that you're having this discussion because it's so critical because your your financial advisor or a CPA or even your bookkeeper, we work with hundreds at least dozens of companies, right? And like for me, myself, I've worked with Fortune 500 companies to like one person companies and all along the spectrum. And so that exposure, all that experience, we can basically gift you and dump on you when the time is right. And so the more sort of ongoing exposure we have to one another, the better. I love that. I love that. Okay, so we have um we have a question from Mike Alton, and his question is, <laughs> Hi Mike. <laughs> I actually love both my day job and side hustle. Any other tips for planning both? Oh, I love that. I love my day job and my side hustles too. So Mike, awesome question. I think the advice I would give you is to stick with both for sure. And it sounds like you've already made that decision, but I also think you wanna take a look at where the two worlds could collide from a planning standpoint, because you now have at least one and a half times income that you normally would. So you wanna kind of sock away some of that money um, while you're younger and plan for the future. So financially speaking, you, you know, take a look at not only things that you do through work, like your 401k and all these great options that you have, you might have there. And then also look at some planning for your side hustle as well and take a look at opportunities there and make sure that your accountant um, is really in tune to working with people that have side hustles. I, I find a lot of accountants that I speak with on behalf of my clients, are sort of just very um, generic, like I call them lemonade CPAs. Like you give me, you give me your paperwork like once a year, and I file it, and then you send me a check. I mean, that's such a missed opportunity. I think you need a really dynamic advisor um, 
And also take a look at your liquidity needs too, because you might be able to, because you're doing both, more opportunities could come across your table, which is always great to have a little bit of cash on hand to see what else you could do and grow. Mm, interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. I wanted to go back to that other tip that you had about um, leveraging your credit cards responsibly, especially with points. Because I know you had a Forbes article about it and I was, I was like, oh, I got to skim this before I could, but I, I didn't have a chance to. What would you say would be, and hopefully you have the answer, um, what, what would be like the best credit card for someone that travels a lot? Yeah, love that. Well, I travel a ton and I love to travel. I always joke that if I'm not working, I'm traveling. <laughs> um, so for someone like yourself, I think we have to take a look. I know, you know, you're based here near me in Southern California. So you want to take a look at what sort of providers you use all the time. So I'll give me, me as an example. I travel to New York all the time because I'm on the CNBC Financial Advisor Council and a whole bunch of other things. And so what that means is uh, like JetBlue flies from Southern California to New York regularly. So I looked at a JetBlue card, right? Because I like I travel with my crew. We need to check bags, all that stuff. Um, really take a look at where it is that you travel to and what would make your life a little bit easier. I have like, for example, a Chase, Chase cards. I have Amex cards to be able to maximize on points because those points that I generate on my business, I then use to travel with my family for free because I have three little kids, as you may know. And so for my husband and I and our three kids, that's five people that are being subsidized all by, mostly almost all by credit card points. And we like to vacation really well. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That was my question is, you know, I have the Southwest card because I'm usually just flying around from, you know, SoCal to NorCal or just uh -huh. wherever I go, Southwest has it. And yeah. I was wondering, cause I, I, I got all these points and mm -hmm. then, um, I was like, can I use it for my family or does it have to be strictly business? And it sounds like you could use your points for whatever works best for you. Oh yeah, you're the owner of your points, so you definitely can. And Southwest has this really cool program right now that's going on where um, if you earn enough points, you can actually get a free companion pass for one to two years. So you might want to look into that. And so um, there's a lot of talk about that right now. In fact, uh, there's Southwest just offered a deal to select people where I think if you spend like three or four thousand dollars for the first couple months, then they'll give you like thirty thousand points plus a free companion pass, which is great. So maybe for work, you're not traveling with somebody, but like for your personal travel, you might want to, right? And if you go from paying for like three people down to you know, just two people, that's definitely a savings and opportunity there. So yeah, you wanna take a look at that. Like I'm like, uh, one of my favorite programs um, is with Hyatt, Hyatt has awesome hotels and so that you know I really like their program to be able to earn points and then use those points to then pay for a free nice hotel um, for my for my family travel so you'll want to take a look at that and then like a, like I, I really like these generic sort of travel credit cards like Chase has a great one I have the Amex one too which will then give you like multiplier on your travel expenses and your daily living expenses and you get things like global entry and you get priority pass or lounge access which is really important when you travel with your team for work because but you get global entry too uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that, like on my wish list of what I've been wanting to do for 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 2019. Really? Yeah, well, because we're so close to to Mexico, and I have you know one of my clients is a master chef, and she always goes down to Guadalajara for like all this wine tasting. And I'm like, I want to go with you. I need to get that. Global you should. Region. Yeah. Well, glow actually it. Yeah, you can. I'll I'll show you how to do that really really easily, and it can get covered. In fact, my Amex, uh, my Amex card. Uh, enables not only for me to get free global entry, but all the authorized users on my account too. So there's a lot of ways to do it. And it, this is such a time saving, time saving and money saving um, sort of project, if you will, for you and your team. For example, like I often travel with somebody on my team and literally we're going into the airport, you know, we instead of having to rush to a restaurant to eat, we'll just eat in the lounge, we'll take it easy, we'll charge up our devices. And then um, the global, I have global entry and I have clear. And that's really awesome. Um, <laughs> um, 
Yeah, that's awesome because clear is available at all like the really busy airports. So when you're rushing, you know, from like a conference or something, getting to that airport because of traffic and then you literally can skip the whole line, almost the entire TSA line, by the way. Yeah. We're not even talking about pre-check line or global entry line. We're talking about like all the way to the front and then clear takes you right in. It's 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 saved me several times. <laughs> I just love this conversation because the things that you're bringing up, like I've I've encountered, right? Like the long TSA lines and it just never even came across as like, you could totally write that off as an expense if you signed up for clear or if you did this or even as. Yeah. And there's a lot of discount things like too. If you even have some Delta, let's say you have a Delta Sky Miles account that you can actually get a discount on clear. And then, so there's a lot of ways to be able to do all these uh, travel sort of wants and needs on um, and, and do it in a very smart way. So I think it's all about travel and currency, not to overspend. But of course, this formula only works, really only works if you pay your credit cards off 100% every single month. I'm not talking like even letting one penny slide to next month. You need to pay that baby off every single month. And if you do that, there's some awesome formulas to really maximize your money. So I always say if, if I can show you these techniques to spend less on your travel, that means you'll have more to invest in your retirement with me. So like I just had a conversation with one of my clients who just proposed to his significant other. And I said, when you find out where the wedding is going to be, because he's like, I have family flying in. And so I, we will figure out the best credit card and which hotel that you should do this at and negotiate like group pricing, which will get you points, which could be used to basically subsidize your honeymoon. No way. And Financial advisors help you with that? <laughs> I'm Not just, most of them, but I do. <laughs> I'm like so where I feel like I've been living it under a rock, Winnie, and you're just call me, <laughs> yes, dude. <laughs> yeah, I love it because still, so so my thing is that it's like if I really cared about my clients, which I do, I love my clients, then I would think about you as a whole person, like your ultimate bottom line. So yeah, I mean, are we supposed to be talking about credit cards and stuff? I don't know, but this is something that I'm very passionate about helping my clients with. And I'll tell you, I have not had one client tell me, "Don't tell me how to do this." So. If I can add, um, you know, better life for them and reduce the financial outlay to travel, lifestyle stuff, and then they can take that money and put towards their retirement or their child's college savings account, for me, that's a win. And I'm happy. That's that's why I do it. Oh, my God. Okay, you guys, this is exactly why Winnie has, like, one of the most followed podcasts out there. And Winnie, I actually have, like, your website up behind me because mm. you – how long have you been podcasting for? Well, it's a funny story. So I started podcasting before I knew what a podcast was. So actually, I didn't start my own podcast. I was lucky enough for a tune-in radio to approach me and tell me they wanted a business podcast. So they actually produced my podcast back in the day. And then that's really how it started. And to be honest with you, I need to do a better job of doing more. Uh, we sort of transitioned to doing more video casts because I love video. You love video. So we were doing video and then pulling the audio uh, for our podcast. But now, you know, we've been really fortunate. We've had, um, we have like a really huge sponsor come and really support us. So I think we're revamping it all and it's coming. I think it's going to come for sure in 2019. It's going to it's going to be all due. You know, we've, we've interviewed some really fun people like Damon John and um, Brooke Burke and whatnot. But 2019, I've got even more fun people that um, have asked to be on. So the interviews should be pretty awesome. <laughs> and how often do you get, um, how often do you release a new episode? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> well, to be honest with you, that's a good question. I've been kind of bad about releasing new episodes. Curtis, how, how often do we release <laughs> new podcast interviews? Not often enough is the answer, my friends. So yeah. <laughs> well, that's but you know, I, I manage a client, a pretty large client base. And uh, yeah, but but I am on Good Day LA on most Mondays. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That works out. Well, awesome. So we've got a couple of comments here. So Mike Alton was like, global reentry, done and done. He likes to, he travels a lot to Paris with Agora Pulse. So I'm oh, sure that I'm he, so jealous. Yeah, he gets a lot of perks there. So Winnie goes over to New York. Mike is going to go to Paris. I'm going to go to Guadalajara. <laughs> Definitely and, eat some eat some food for me because I would love to go to Guadalajara and eat. 
<laughs> oh, I know. I'm such I'm such a foodie. <laughs> but you've definitely got a lot of fans here that are tuning in. You've got Mike Alton. You've got Craig. Marissa says she absolutely loves you. So thank you for bringing your fans over. Yeevee is just scribbling down notes as well. And so having said that, Winnie, like you've given so many thought-provoking ideas. I've got a laundry list of things that I want to do. If people want to learn more about you or how to get started with all of these ideas that you dropped, where's the best place for them to go? Well, that's a great question. Thank you so much for asking that. Um, well, I have um, a website, which is winniesun.com. That's a good place to start. I'm also super active on Twitter, which is also Winnie Sun. And actually every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Pacific or 2 p.m. Eastern, we have one of the largest business entrepreneur related tweet chats, which is hashtag Winnie Sun. We trend a lot of times. So we'd love for you to join us there. Um, and if you're looking to be a client, feel free just to reach out to me any way you want and we'll get you on the calendar. Happy to do that. Um, or if you're like, far away, you're just starting off and you feel like you want to get started, but you feel like you can't work with me yet, you can go to savingpie.com, which is a really fun little project that we started um, that lets you have really great, uh, like the financial things that we talked about, like online. So you can do it on your phone or on a computer. It's super easy. What was that? Saving pie? Saving pie, like, you know, apple pie, but oh saving goodness. pie. <laughs> I like, I want to pull it up right now and I want to see saving how it looks pie. like. Let's see. Oh, it is. Okay. It says, hello, Save. invest in your future. Invest so this in is, your future. Is this free? Is You have to pay for this? This is actually, um, this is like getting my team and I at like a significant discount. So basically you go in and you get a free financial plan and then you can decide on how to invest and it kind of takes you all that. So it's a great tool if you're up and coming or you're starting off and you want to put away something for 2019, you want to put some retirement money aside. This is a great place to do it because like it's definitely getting you great financial advice at a fraction of the cost. Mm. So it's a great thing for up and coming. But if your needs are getting more complicated or you really want like that financial buddy to coach you through like as you're growing up and up, then you probably want to reach out to us directly. Cause, um, but you can get, you know, you can really do both. You can actually do that and that. So it's up to you, whatever you want to do. We're easy. Very cool. And if you were to, if you were to recommend one oh. podcast episode that someone should listen to right now, like right after the show, which one would it be? Oh, good question. Well, from what I hear, people love the interview I had with Peter Kim, who's a friend of mine, who's a CEO of Hudson Jeans right? Really hot jeans. Or uh, Damon John's interview. I think that's a good one. And um, aside from that, I don't know. There's all, I think all of them are good. They're like choosing your favorite child. They're all awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I love that. <laughs> okay. And then one last question for you. And I, I feel like, um, I feel like I'm getting all the nuggets because you know what you guys, viewers, you're not asking questions right now. You're all scribbling notes too. Um, you're so sh don't be shy. We are family. <laughs> family. That's the way it should be. Um, how, if, if you're an entrepreneur and you're married, how do you start the conversation with your significant other? If you're an entrepreneur? Yeah, or just like, how do you start the conversation with your significant other? Like, hey, this is what's going on in my business. This is what you're doing in your work. How do you start that conversation? For some people who aren't talking about money with their significant others. Oh, got it. <laughs> Well, this is critical. You really want to talk to your, your peeps, your loved ones about money as soon as possible and as often as possible. And it sounds really crazy, but I think any healthy relationship, whether they're married or not, is like you got to get to the, the root of money. And the easiest thing to do is to talk about your goals. So I always recommend talking about what you want together first. So you should get a blank piece of paper and write down your financial goals. So like keep it to like three. And then you ask your significant other to do the same thing. And then it's kind of like surprise. And you like put them together and figure out if you have the same goals or different goals and use that as a starting point. Because it's better to talk about doing something together amazing financial wise than to be like, well, it's because you spend too much or your credit score isn't high enough. Blah, blah, blah. That gets nowhere. It has to be a very positive experience of where we want to go money wise together. And then from there, you take the conversation, you know, layer by layer, talk about savings. And But if you guys have a common goal, all this is so much easier to talk about not spending as much money. 
And then if you feel like you can't do that, then you should bring an expert in, like a financial advisor or an accountant. Like that third party can really help a lot. Um, But yes, talk about that. Talk about your financial goals, what you love to do. And if you're an entrepreneur, talk about your struggles too. Like, you know, there's this one client, I was so excited. I thought I was going to sign. And then they, they, you know, they wanted to undercut me and this and that. Talk about those so they understand where you're coming from. And even when they're, when you think they're not listening, they're actually listening and it helps keep them engaged. Um, and then the other discussions are a lot easier, but I want, I think more than anything before the financial plan, before the budget, all that stuff, the two of you have to get in a saving mindset. And what I mean by that is saving for your cup, for the couple needs to become cool. Like this is so cool. We're spending less money, not cause we're cheap. We're saving it cause, Hey, we're going to go to Paris one day with Mike. No. <laughs> <laughs> I love, thank you for dropping that in. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mike, we're going to have croissants with you today. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, I did not even plan that, but Winnie, like, so much love for you. You guys, this has been – Winnie, I can't thank you so much just for everything that you've uncovered. Like, even in my head, like, there's definitely, like, a lot of shifts where I was like, oh, yeah, should have thought about that. Oh, yeah, I'm going to have that conversation today. If I could just ask you one more question. Before I let you go, because I really don't want to let you go. I just want you to stay. 1-800-WINNIE. <laughs> just call me when you got questions. Um, what about our kids? How do we start our kids to start thinking about their financial futures instead of just the mommy-daddy wallet? <laughs> okay, how much time do you have? Because um, <laughs> oh, I got to get mean, back to work. Kids. How do you start that conversation? Because I had a four-year-old, and she's about to become like a 14-year-old. <laughs> oh, of course. Don't you know, mommy? Four is the next 14. Mm-hmm. But with all seriousness, okay, I'm going to give you the Cliff Notes version because I can go on for ages about this. Okay, number one thing, okay, when do you start saving for college before the child is born? Number one rule. Second thing is you got to talk to your kids about money like ASAP. And um, I'm going to teach you that in a second. But the most important thing before that is make sure parents don't give your kids allowance. All right? Kids should not be getting money just for existing in like coexisting with you do we get paid because we live we survive uh no people pay us for doing things like work right doing above and beyond what we're required to do to survive so the same thing should go with your children so you want to teach your children at four years old or even younger about the idea of currency and what that means and so like at my house we use those you know those little raffle tickets i got a whole reel of them from amazon right for five bucks And they get tickets for doing things above and beyond what they're supposed to do. Is homework above and beyond? No, they're supposed to do homework. Are they supposed to be good? No, they're supposed to be good. So anything above that, they get they get currency for, and this currency will then fund their vacation with mom and dad. You don't just get to go to vacation because your last name is the same as us. No, right? So really critical to think about this because the children learn by experiences and watching. So if you don't set these patterns early on, it gets really difficult to have that conversation later on. Um, I hope that answer your question. But yeah, in terms of like, you know, discussions, this is how you do. You don't actually have discussions with a four-year-old. You just show them how you do it. I love that so much. I feel like I... I got raffle tickets somewhere in like underneath the stairs. I'm gonna go pull that out. My That's right. says that he's totally dying right now. I mean, there was a part where you're like, you don't have a discussion with a four year old. I literally wanted to fall out of my chair just cracking up. Winnie, you've been absolutely amazing. Again, you guys, if you wanna find out more about Winnie, let me just kind of put her website right behind her. Run one second. Here we go. WinnieSun.com, go ahead and check her out. The other one that we had was Saving Pie or SavingPie.com, but it's a part of Sun Group, WP.com. So go ahead and check that out. She's also got her amazing podcast. So please tune into that as well because there's some amazing stuff that she has over there. Winnie, you've been amazing. Thank you. Thank well, you so much. <laughs> well, you are amazing. So as a favor to me, I'd love to invite you into the studio so we can film together and eat. <gasps> this I, okay, you know what? I just died. <laughs> <laughs> Curtis wants to meet you. We're, you gotta meet our team. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Your team <laughs> Curtis, you're amazing too. Thanks for hooking all of that good stuff out there. You guys, Winnie, I'll let you go. I've got like post-it notes of things to do. If you guys love this episode again, go ahead and drop some hearts. Share this with your loved loved ones because you definitely should be having these conversations. Winnie, thank you so much. Bye, you guys. Say bye. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out.
拜。